I don't know if you see it, but it's raining. Yeah, again. And it's been like this for the past week. So in today's video, we're going to do some creative shots with the Insta360 X3, which also has become one of my favorite action cameras over the past few months. And I've been using it so much. It's a real joy to use and the editing process and reframing process in the Insta360 Studio app is fantastic, especially when you know how it works. So in today's video, we're gonna do a cinematic fake FPV shot with the Insta360 X3 since I can't go out and fly my Avara because it's raining every single day. And we're also gonna go through the entire reframing process, export process, and also put it over to Final Cut Pro and do some additional tweaks to remove some of the uh, noise which you might have in your footage, especially when you're shooting in a pretty low light environment, which we're gonna do in today's video because I'm using this inside and there's not proper lighting at all. So the first thing is to actually capture the cinematic FPV shots with your 360 camera, which is extremely easy. So what I've done is to basically turn on the X3 and then I moved over to manual settings and changed the white balance to 4,500 Kelvin, but I highly recommend that you do auto white balance if you're shooting in a scenario which uh, I did where the lighting uh, tones change from room to room. I also put the ISO on 640 and I placed the shutter speed on 1 over 100. And the reason why I put the shutter speed at 1 over 100 instead of uh, 1 over 60 since I'm recording in 30 FPS with 5.7K is simply because I want it to be a little bit faster so it removes some of the bubbling and jittering which might go on in your image when you are moving at a faster rate in low light scenarios. So that's basically the reason for increasing the frame rate. So after putting these settings, it was all about, uh, you know, replicating some cinematic FPV movements. And I think I nailed that pretty good with uh, just pulling it down the stairs and uh, out to the kitchen through the living room number one or two, and then over to the next living room and into my office here where I sort of faked this FPV drone landing, which I think was pretty awesome. Now, when all of this is done, it's all about reframing in the Insta360 Studio app. So now we have the fake FPV shot added to the Insta360 Studio app here. And as you can see, I'm just walking around with this stick. And what we're gonna do is to reframe this to look like a cinematic FPV shot. So the first thing I wanna do is to go to the beginning of where I want this to start. So we can actually start it right here. I'm gonna use this trim handle to trim in the beginning part and just use the mouse drag around on the uh, uh, previous screen here and place it something like that and what i also like to do for the first part is to make a keyframe now i'm just going to hit space just to play the clip here and see what it looks like and right at this point when i go around the wall i'm going to make another keyframe and reframe this to the right side because if I reframe this to the left side uh, it's gonna look a little bit different so let's look at the right side first so this is now reframing in the right direction so if we go to this keyframe again and delete it make a new keyframe and then rotate this the left side here so we have the same look like that if we now do a playback of this it would actually go to the left side instead and this is not really looking like an FPV shot or it does but the point here is to remove me from the frame and here you can already see me in the frame here so I'm just gonna delete this again make another keyframe and 
push it to the right so it has the correct movement. And I'm also going to push it a little bit down here so we can actually illustrate that the fake FPV drone is doing some sort of a dive down the stairs here. So if I now go to the beginning, do a playback, we have this turning to the right and then it dives down like that. Pretty awesome. So the next one is to make a keyframe somewhere right here. And now we're going to take uh, the uh, frame and just move to the right or to the left, I mean, like that. If we now do a playback of these two, it goes to the right and now it starts to go to the left. But we can also see that it had some spike here or some sudden jump right at the keyframe and we're gonna remove that later so there's nothing to worry about but now we have this going uh, in here and what we're gonna do now is to go to a point right let's say here make another keyframe and turn this to the left so make sure that this is uh, rotating the correct way so we can go to the uh, beginning here again before this change and press space to play back. And now we can actually see that it starts to go to the left direction a little bit too early and we don't want that, but we're going to change that later once we have done all the keyframing. So now it goes straight forward and what I want to do is to stop it right here because at this point it will do another movement as we can see here so i want to stop this uh somewhere around here make a keyframe and for this keyframe i'm not going to do any changes then i'm going to move a little bit further until we get to the door and make another keyframe and again i'm going to turn it to the left so we have the movement going uh correctly and right after this, we are going inside through the door. And on this point, I want to make another keyframe and turn this to the right like that. Now we can do another playback here. And on this point right here, I also want this to go to the left side, something like this. And if we now just do a playback from the beginning here, we can see that the camera is going to the right and the fake drone is doing a dive down the stairs. Then it goes to the left and it continues to go to the left, which we're going to change in a second here now. And then we come around the wall and uh, it goes straight forward. And now it starts to turn left again. This actually looks pretty decent, but we want to maybe make the change a little bit different here. Now you can actually click hold on these keyframes here and you can actually drag them as you want. Uh, we're going to go through the steps uh, later as well, which I think we need to do. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to select this keyframe right here and I'm going to just change the angle a little bit more to something like that. So let's start from here and we have the movement coming to the left like that. Perfect. And now it should start to go right and left again and this looks perfect so at this point i want another keyframe and it's going to be more to the right and as a last keyframe here when the drone or the fake drone is landing i want the camera to tilt a little bit upwards just like an fpv drone something like that okay so now going back to the beginning here and let's just fix all these keyframes so we have the smoothest possible movement in our shot so the first one here is pretty decent, but it also has that hard stop, which is going on here. So what we're going to do is to select the line in between the keyframes and we're going to choose the last option called fade in, fade out. This is the absolute best uh, transition or the ECE's curve system for the keyframing in the studio app. So we're going to select this one and we're going to do that on the next one as well. And Let's just do it with every single one because we're going to do that anyway. So we might as well just do it right away. So now that we have all the keyframes on fade in and fade out, we can go back to the beginning here and we can do a playback and we can see this is going a little bit smoother now and it goes down. But another thing here is that you could also see me in the frame. So now it's time to change the um, position of the keyframes here. So we're going to take this and drag a little bit more to the uh, right here and we can do another playback 
like that and perfect i'm just outside of the frame you can see my feet here at the bottom but right there but this is something that we are gonna uh, remove with some cinematic bars so this looks perfect we have the drone going to the right and it has this super nice dive which is going down you can also add some speed ramping to this if you want we have the next turn going a little bit starting a little bit early and going a little bit fast so what we're going to do here is to take this keyframe and drag more to the right and we have this one coming in like that but i also think maybe if we just drag this keyframe a little bit more to the beginning we select this and we need to turn it a little bit more upwards something like that perfect Okay, so now we go straight forward again and we can now see that the turn looks so much better, but you can still see me in the frame here. And that means we want to add some changes to that as well. So maybe we want to drag this a little bit further away from the first one. So that stretches out the movement and makes the movement a little bit slower. And as we can see, I'm outside of the frame and this looks perfect. Now, one thing I might want to add here is, let's see, actually looks perfect and then to the right the the one to the right was a little bit too fast so we're gonna stretch these uh, keyframes from each other uh, like that so now we have this one coming to the right here and that looks much better and the next one how does that look started a little bit uh, fast so a little bit faster so we're gonna extend this And that was also a little bit too fast, so we're going to extend this as well. So this is the way that you do it. You just make the keyframes and then you can adjust the keyframing later if you need to do that. And I, and here, for example, we can see here at the end it lands and then it starts to go upwards. So that means I don't really need this last keyframe and can just delete that. Maybe I want to extend this a little bit, select that and then tilt the camera upwards on this last one. So if we do a playback here now and... Um, it comes in and it goes down for a landing our drone is going down for landing and perfect so that is the end of the shot here i'm also going to trim out or trim away the end point right there and we now have a finished reframed clip but one thing that we can add to spice this up even more is to select the uh, keyframes and add a rotation to them so for this first one here we don't really need any rotations because it's going straight forward but for the next one here it's actually uh, having movement to the right as we can see here so we want to select this keyframe and then we want to make the movement go to the right just like that so now it will start to rotate as well to the right and then go down the stairs and on the next one here we're gonna make the rotation the other way so now it's first gonna rotate to the right and now it's gonna rotate to the left and uh, let's see if we can actually change some of this to make it a little bit smoother by adjusting the keyframe here okay that was a little bit off you could see me in the frame there and see if we can adjust this a little bit up like that and if we go here whoops let's see okay so we have it going down the stairs and now it turns i still think it turns a little bit too fast so i'm going to select this keyframe and extend the position of it or maybe shrink it in something like that perfect and uh, now the rotation will even out but it goes so slow to this last keyframe that we don't really have to do any changes from this to this keyframe now on the next part here we have it again going to the left maybe we can select this and then add some rotation to it like that now we will have the rotation following the movement and for the next one here we're gonna rotate the other way like that so now it rotates to the left and here it will start to rotate to the right 
And now we can also do another rotation on this to the left like that. So now it will go like this and to the left. And it will start to even out and it will land. So now we have our finished clip here and we want to export this to our editing software so we can uh, uh, do the final tweaks we need because this is uh, still a low light shot and we might want to add some uh, noise reduction to this and uh, optimize the image a little bit more. But for this, if you want to export this directly over to um, Instagram or TikTok or uh, like a YouTube shorts, we're going to select the aspect here and we're going to choose 9 by 16 or 4 by 3 or 1 by 1 depending on what type of aspect you want to export in. For Instagram, I'm going to select 9 by 16 and here I don't have to do any changes at all. So what I'm going to do is to select the yellow export button. Now I always use ProRes when I export my videos, but if your computer can't handle ProRes, then I want to go with H.264 or H.265 and choose the bitrate of 200 because ProRes is going to put a lot of stress on your computer and your workflow might actually be slowed down. And the differences is not really that huge, especially for YouTube, uh, but for a longer project which is dedicated to an Insta360 X3 video and where all the files, all the edits are uh, uh, recordings from the X3, I always export in ProRes. But for this, in this example, I'm just gonna do the um, H.265 and I'm going to change the resolution to 4K, so 3840. Now this is basically everything that you need to do and uh, now we have this for Instagram, right? So we're going to add this to Q and now we can see that on top left corner here, but I also want the exact same one for YouTube. So I'm going to go down to the aspect and change this to 16 by 9 and still I don't have to do any changes other than going to the export and then make sure I select the H.265 or H.264 or ProRes and then change the resolution and bitrate. But this is already set to 4K, so the only thing I have to do is add to Q. Now I can select both of the clips here on the left side, right click and choose Start Export. So now that our export is complete, we can move over to Final Cut here and see if we find the two videos, import those over to Final Cut and drag them down to our timeline. Now you can use whatever soft editing software you have, it doesn't really matter, but I highly recommend that you get a software or an add-on which has some noise reduction. Because if we take a look at the image right here, we can see that there's a lot of noise going on in the image here, especially on the left side, and we want to remove that as good as possible. So the first thing I'm going to start with is to add an adjustment layer here to our uh, timeline and stretch that out throughout the clip. Make sure this is selected and we can also see that this clip is a little bit too warm. And if we go to this area, which is my office, the image and everything looks uh, decent. And this is because I adjusted my settings for this uh, office here and uh, what I should have done is actually to put it to auto white balance. So if you're going to record something which has different colors, different lights and a sequence like this, for example, I would highly suggest that you put the auto white balance. Now, what we're going to do first is to correct the white balance here. I'm going to remove some of the warmer colors here or warmer tones and I'm going to add some blue to the mid tones and also some blue to the shadows here. And let's take a look at that. Definitely looks better already. So this is before and this is after. Now, we're just going to keep it like that. I think this will look good for the office as well. It's a little bit too much blue in the office here, but just going to keep it like that. What we want to do or might do now is to add some changes to the mid-tones. Maybe pull the mid-tones a little bit down and pull the shadows up. This will create this fade and also help remove some of the uh, uh, grain and noise that you might have in your image. So if we take a look at the left side of the stairs now, this is before and we can also see here on the right side where the uh, pictures are and this is after. So it's a little bit better, just a tiny bit better, especially the colors are better, uh, but we can also lift this and you can adjust it as you want basically uh, depending on your scenery. But the key here is noise reduction. So I'm going to apply a noise reduction to this clip here 
And what I'm going to do is to go over to the settings and I'm going to change the amount to maximum and also the sharpness to none. And once I've done this, I'm going to add another one and do the exact same thing. So maximum on the amount and none on the sharpness. So now we have most of the noise removed here. So if we turn these two off now, you can see there's a lot of noise going on here on the top a corner on the left side and on the top in the middle and on the right side. So if we turn on one of them, you can see that it's uh, partially improved. And if we turn on the next one, it's even better. So now we have applied some noise reduction to the entire clip here and it looks much better. And that's basically the only changes along with the manual settings that I do for this low light show. And in my opinion, it turned out pretty Good. Now I'm going to export this uh, as a single video, upload that to Instagram. So if you want to check out how this video looks on Instagram, there's a link down in the description below to my Instagram where you can check out this exact exported um, uh, fake FPV show and see how the quality looks for yourself. So there you have a simple and effective way of creating a cinematic fake drone shot with the Insta360 X3. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know by dropping a like down below. And also, if you haven't subscribed already, that would be really appreciated. Now, let me know your thoughts on the X3. Do you have it? Will you be getting it? And if you don't have it and looking to get one, there will be some links down in the description below where you can get some free accessories if you pick up one of these as well. So with that said, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video.